before we get started with the exit interviews, I want to say that the microphones were not working. So the first interviews with Brian January, Ezzie Magbagor, and Stephanie Talbot were very difficult to understand. So we added subtitles in for this portion. The second half of this interview with Mercedes Russell and Epiphany Prince and Gentle Lavender is a bit easier to understand. Sorry for the inconvenience. This is the exit interviews with Brian January, Ezzy Magbagor, and Steph Talbot. And we are able to talk with these three about what they have moving forward into the offseason and their Euro League and Australian League basketball. So, <laughs> uh, questions in the room? Uh, can, uh, can Brie, what's the emotion this morning? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think, I mean, dis, I, not disbelief, but I mean, it, you know, like we, I think through and through we believed we had what it took to really go all the way with this team. Um, and just, you know, just it hurts. It hurts a lot to end the season like that. I mean, with a team like we have. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still grateful for a season like like this. So, um, Percy, uh, is there just any one, two, or three moments that any of you guys will sort of take from the of the season? And if you made it sort of go down the line, uh, we can start with you, Brian. Oh. Just, just, just take anything they, they feel sort of sort of take away from the season. Um. Jeez, moments. I, I don't know if there's any particular moments, but just the relationships I've built with these people. I mean, I yeah, I there were so many moments just because of the people I was able to be surrounded with every day. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't I can't pinpoint one. Um, yeah, I mean, I I'd say the same. I think, especially. I think as the season went on, there were definitely games where we kind of got over the line. Um, where in games previously, we wouldn't have um, been able to do that. So I think just seeing, I guess, the growth in the team um, in some games and just knowing what we were capable of. And like Bree said, I definitely, like we all thought, you know, we were going to go further. Um, so it's just kind of, yeah, I guess disappointing um, that we didn't, I guess, reach that potential that we knew we had. Um, you guys all play over the season since you've been here. How much is, does that have to be in the back of your mind as the season's coming to an end like this? Just when you know your WBA season may end any day, you may have to be prepared to go um, overseas. Yeah, I mean, like for me and as we have the World Cup in, I think two weeks now is the first game, so trying to focus on playoffs and do the best we can for the playoffs, knowing that, knowing exactly that, that any day we're going to be packed up and move down here within one or two days. Um, but I think, I mean, it's in the back of your mind, but at the same time, we were full-heartedly focused on this playoff run and this is where we wanted to be and this is what we wanted to be doing. So I guess it's there in the back of your mind, but it doesn't take away from what we're doing here. Okay. Um, yeah, just um, after the Let World Cup, you two guys plan to do what? Um, I'm playing in Hungary this oh. year. So after the World Cup, I'll get 10 days at home and then head to Europe. Will let that be your first time? In yeah, Hungary? first time. Yeah. And so you're so proud. Yeah. yeah. And anything that you're excited for for that? Or what, what, um, what are you looking forward to? What I think that? just the whole experience. Obviously, it's my first time in Europe. Um, and just looking forward to like the competition and obviously different lifestyle being in Europe, playing with um, different people as well. Um, I, yeah, I think there's a lot to look forward to. Have you asked Brie any experience about Hungary? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah we I talked about it. Talk. Gabby and I told her, you know, tried to fill her in and let her know what she's getting into. But it's it's a great little town in Hungary and good organization, so I think she'll be all right. And, uh, and you'll be doing what, what happens and stuff? Back to Australia, I'll play in the WBO for the same team I played for the last couple of years, which is like home for me. So it's exciting to be by my family, by my partner, and 
I guess uh, it's it's a different role for me. I play more of a leadership role there, so I look to grow and um, expand my game, and then hopefully come back to the WNBA next season. And then we heard from Mike you mm -hmm. that you're not retired yet. So you'll be playing <laughs> um, tomorrow. In a few months, yeah. I, there was an opportunity to go play um, overseas in Turkey, where I started my overseas journey um, with a really good team. Um, that we basically have a WNBA team over there, so uh, yeah, it was just an opportunity that I um, thought I'd take up um, before I hang them up. So yeah, just excited to end where it started overseas and you know play a little basketball. And, have fun and enjoy it. So, yeah. Is he kind of in an interesting, unusual contract situation with you being a reserved player in free agency? What are you, kind of your expectations going into that? Um, I don't really know. This is my, I guess, first free agency period. I'm obviously not a rookie anymore. Um, but I just think, obviously, a lot of things are changing with like Bree leaving, Sue leaving. Um, so I'm just going into it with, I guess, an open mind and just. Yeah, I'm just going to take it one day at a time. Any more questions in the room? Yeah, yeah. Just, just for a little, like, as it, just how would you sort of describe your season, right? I mean, you were, I guess you began as a backup, took over the starting role, had that, you know, leading the leagues and block and skyrocketing, and then went back to the like, bench. Just how did that go for you? Um, yeah, I think I just, had to be ready to kind of adjust to any role. Um, obviously, with without Sadie's at the start of the season, I became a starter and kind of had to adjust to that. And um, just credit to like Noe and the coaches and my teammates for having that confidence in me. And then obviously Tina coming um, and having her start. Um, you know, it was great to have her on the team. And I think just you know I had to adjust adjust to the bench role. And obviously, I feel like I could have you know done more for my team at times especially towards the back end of the season. Um, but yeah, I think just going forward, just being able to you know, adjust to any role that you're given, um, I think that's key, uh, playing in the WNBA. Was, was that hard? Was it difficult to let like, go from like, um, the role? No, I think, I don't, I, no, no, sorry. Uh, yes and no, I think, um, obviously I think just so like as a professional, you just have to be, you know, quick to adjust to that role. So I think that's just, you know, on me. I think just going forward, just being able to, um, yeah, adjust quicker. So I don't know if that answered your question. Uh, I think we have to cut things off here. We're going to have Jotel, Mercedes, and Biff. Uh, thank you so much. This is the exit interview with Epiphany Prince, Mercedes Russell, and Jantel Lavender. I'm just going to start off. You obviously one of the most trying seasons you've ever had. Can you just talk about what that's like and how you were able just to ground yourself and get away? I mean, it was nothing that was in my control, so there was really nothing I could do about it but be positive and keep a good mindset of getting better and, I mean, getting healthy, obviously. That's the main point. And at the end of the day, I was just there to support my teammates. As a player, just how frustrating is it that you cannot contribute to the team? I mean, it wasn't because it wasn't like I had an ankle injury or a shoulder injury. It was literally something that just came up and it was nothing I could do about it. So, I mean, it did nothing for me personally because, like I said, it was uncontrollable. So, I mean, there was nothing that I could get mad about or sad about because it was just what I had to go through. And I grew from that. How are you feeling now? Yeah. I'm doing really good. Um, obviously, on the other side of the hill now, so I'm just focusing on staying healthy, getting healthy, and just getting myself back into shape. All right. Hey, yeah, and they just like, how do you sort of manage that sort of going forward? You know, you just about not trying to rebuild too much, but just trying to sort of get up. A... Uh, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, just getting back into working out again, just getting back to normal life. And just, like I said, working my way back into shape, there's really no other story or plan to it. It's just, I was obviously out from basketball. So, I mean, you know, once you're out, you lose all that muscle, all that shape really fast. So, I mean, it's just me attaining and getting that back, which it's now I have time clearly, but it's just going to be day by day process. 
do you think that you'll ever get back to where you were or and what is that time frame going to look like? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, but there's no time frame because I could take my time as of now. So, I mean, I got months and months to get into shape, like I said. And uh, do you plan to play overseas or are you staying home? What, what, is, what is your plan? Mm, no plan right now. Just I'm going to go with it. Just see how I've been feeling, you know, in these next couple of weeks when I start working out more and just getting back into it. John Todd, this is such a veteran team. You've had a lot of experience in this league. Could you talk about just kind of what the feelings have been um, after last night's loss now going into the offseason? Um, I would probably just, I mean, obviously it's disappointing um, when you stack a team like this and obviously get two like veteran season players off of like waivers, you expect to win. Like that's ne never going to happen. Um, and to me, I just think that um, obviously the end goal was to win, but um, I think when you come together, like with a team that has so much talent, it's a, you have to, I mean, it's just a lot of work you have to do outside of just being good basketball players. You got to really just come together a little bit more. Like, I um, mean, sometimes like, <clears throat> I just think it gets overlooked, like with, with talent, like you have to just really be together all the time. And this team came together so sporadically um, I just think that, that that we didn't have that a lot, um, and I think that that matters in games like yesterday. Do you mind elaborating a little on that? Because there was such an emphasis to bring in um, veterans that had this experience, and Coach oftentimes talked about how you guys just had built-in leaders in the locker room. So can you talk about what some of those things were um, outside of on the court um, action that you guys, the steps you guys took to become closer as a team? Um, I think you just have to have time. You know what I mean? The season just was, I mean, it was back to back to back. I mean, we dealt with like COVID early. So like that was taking away time from us getting to know each other. We dealt with like different like injuries, Gabby in and out. I had some illnesses, Sadie's was in and out. People were just in and out all season. And I think that that takes a toll, you know, when it gets to the end of, end of the season, like when you have all of those practices back together. Um, I just mean it in that sense, like not that we weren't close, like off the court, but I just think having those moments, like where like it really matters, like bringing in new people and some people are out, like, I don't know. I, I just think that ultimately that can end up with a veteran team this season that should be able to kind of win games like that. Those are like the small factors that I think can kind of play into not getting over that hump. Uh, we're going to take um, questions from Zoom. Jeff Brown. This is for Mercedes, and, and sorry if this was already asked. I can't really hear the questions in the room, um, but just kind of get your thoughts on on the series against Vegas and kind of having to watch it from the sidelines. And um, obviously, it was a very tough competitive series for you guys. Yeah, this was clearly, I mean, the best series thus far. It's probably going to be the best that you see in the playoffs. We knew it was going to be a battle playing against Vegas, and I think us going in there and winning the game on the road was huge, but we came up short in all the next three games. But I think our fight and our passion showed in those games. Obviously, it wasn't the ending we expected, but I mean, it was a great series to watch. For sure. And, and uh, Epiphany, um, just, I guess, talk about how tough it was going up against, you know, Chelsea Gray and, and Kelsey Plum, some of the stuff they were doing out there. It was tough. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, questions in the room. I think Maz had one, or, or Hunter. Uh, yeah, I just want to get you guys' thoughts again. It felt like um, that could have been a championship series. Um, it felt like you didn't lose that as much as Vegas was answering every single shot. How um, does it I know there's no positive victory in how much of a battle that was, but um, what could you guys just speak of from your experience to the caliber of play we saw in that series? Yeah, I wasn't playing. So. I think Sadie's alluded towards it, though. Like, it was a championship. I think it was a championship series. Um, and I think if we win game three, it's a completely different series. You know, that was unfortunate how that ended, you know, and – um, it was it was heartbreaking, you know what I mean? Because I think everybody left everything out on the floor that game. So for me, I don't know. I think it changes if we get that win 
it don't go into overtime. You know what I mean? It just changes everything. So like all of those little moments matter. Um, and you can't, it's no set formula for it. You know, you just gotta, everybody just gotta go out and just play, you know? So. I'm going to Turkey. Turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been there? Yeah. I, this this will be my my sixth season there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that you're looking forward to what part? Of yeah. I mean, obviously, like for me, like I haven't had like a full season off of my injury, so like for me, like I play AU, obviously, but like for me, it's just just get my feel back and just feeling good out there again, if that's possible. Hopefully, you know what I mean. Um, I don't know, I guess I just need like a feel good season just to feel like myself again and just, I don't know, just play fully and I don't know, just be, I guess, in a, in a, in a nutshell, just be myself again. And, and in terms of the WNBA for like next season, are you playing to come back? Um, I don't know, I'll play it by ear, you know what I mean? Like, obviously I think if it's, if it's gonna be like this, like I would rather give like a young player an opportunity to kind of get that experience to be like in a situation like this. But for me at this late in my season, like in my career, like, I don't know, I just, I wouldn't prefer it, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mas, just one, I, I have no idea. When y'all go overseas, like where's some of the goals, obviously you want to win, you know what I mean? Like, is it okay? I think you mentioned that you want to work on your game. And then, like, what goes into when you go overseas and how is the basketball? Um, I just think you can just purely be yourself. Like in the WNBA, obviously there's caps to how you can play. You have to fit into a role. Like there's certain things you can and can't do. Um, obviously there are go-to players and when we go overseas, like we're, we're all go-to players, you know? So I don't know, it's just a, it's a confidence booster. Um, it's a way to just kind of get yourself back feeling like, you know, how you want to play. And obviously you want to come in from those, those seasons and feel good in the W and hopefully have opportunities here. Seems like there's more joy in terms of self. Um, it just depends on what player you talk to. Obviously, people have different experiences, and my experiences have been, you know, better experiences have been in Europe. But um, obviously, just having the opportunity to win championships and play with great players like this is obviously an experience in itself, too, you know? For the next ladies, um, you're like one of two players that are under contract for the next season. Any idea what this team will look like next year? Listen, man, we just got done playing yesterday, and I have no idea what to tell you. I don't know. <laughs> and like that, just your like that sort of going forward as it pertains to the WNBA. I don't know. You no. Know, would you like to continue playing or? Okay. Um, let's go one last question. Anything else? No, no. Okay, if we don't have any more questions in the room, then thank you so much. Thank you.